So today's topic is 1.5 infinite geometric series found on pages 58 to 65 in your text. Our curriculum outcome, 20.10, to demonstrate understanding of arithmetic and geometric, both finite and infinite sequences and series. All right, in our lesson objectives, number one, to be able to understand the difference between a convergent and divergent infinite geometric series. Number two, to be able to develop and understand the formula for a convergent infinite geometric series. And number three, to apply the formula for convergent infinite geometric series. So an infinite geometric series is one that has no last term, which means it goes on forever, which is why it's called an infinite geometric series. And there are two types of infinite geometric series. The first one is a divergent series in which there will never be a maximum sum. And the second one is a convergent series. It's one that has a maximum value that it approaches. So a divergent series is something that if you looked at this one, say two plus four plus eight plus 16 dot, 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 that would be a divergent series because you're never actually getting to an end answer. When you add these numbers up, it'll go on forever. Now a convergent series is one that would be something like this, two plus uh, one plus a half plus a quarter plus an eighth. And as you keep on adding terms, those terms get so small that eventually you're gonna come up with a number, a maximum value that the sum would approach. Doesn't quite equal it, but it approaches it. So a divergent geometric series, has a common ratio that is greater than one or less than negative one. That would be this first case. Greater than one because um, you could be doubling it each time or less than negative one because you could always be multiplying by something like negative two, negative three, negative four. A convergent geometric series has a common ratio that's a fraction or decimal that's greater than negative one or less than one. So anywhere between negative one and one. And we are focusing on convergent series today and the effect that it has on our sum, which is our SN formula. So here's our sum of geometric series formula. If you recall, it's Sn equals T1 times R to the N minus one, all divided by R minus one. And we're gonna take a look at what happens when our common ratio is a fraction. That's key, because that's the only way it's a convergent geometric series is when it's a fraction. And our number of terms gets really, really big, which would then be R to the N. So we're really looking at what happens when we increase this value right here. So I took the liberty of doing some of that for you. So if we said that our common ratio is a half, and if we squared a half, that now becomes 0 0.25. If we take that half and we took it to the fifth power, say, that now becomes an even smaller decimal, 0 0.03125. You raise that to the tenth power, if there were 10 terms, and you're getting 0 0.000. And then if you raise it to the 50th power, you get 0 decimal 0, 0, blah, 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 blah. So as you can see, as this number increases, the exponent increases, the answer gets really, really close to zero because this is a very, very small decimal. So it looks like as n approaches infinity, and this is how we write it in math, as n gets really, really big, so that 50 could become 100 or 1,000, then r of n, or r to the n, sorry, is approaching zero. And this is just how we would write that in math. If the n arrow infinity, that means that r to the n is approaching zero. So we can make that substitution into our formula. So instead of having r to the n, we know that that thing is approaching and basically zero, a value of zero. So now this is actually the sum of an infinite number of series. So we can call it s to the, with a little infinity sign there. That is t1 times negative one, and that's all over r minus one. Now generally, we don't write um, our top term being negative. So if we were to make that top term positive, that changes the signs of both terms in the bottom. So you'll see your S infinity formula written like this. So T1 equals one minus R. So here's our example. It says find the sum of the following infinite geometric series and it is one plus one fifth plus one over 25 plus dot, dot, dot. So we're gonna use our S infinity formula and that is now T1 over one minus R. And that just means the sum of these, this infinite series is our first term, which is one over one minus our common ratio. Now our common ratio is that this, this thing is being multiplied by one fifth every time. So when it's all said and done, we get one over uh, negative, sorry, positive four fifths. Because this number one is written as five over five when you wanted to find a common denominator. So now we have one multiplied by five over four. So the sum of this series is one and a quarter, five and 
or 5 over 4. So in summary, an infinite geometric series has no last term, which means there are an infinite number of terms. And there are two different types of infinite geometric series, a convergent one, which you can actually find the sum of, and a divergent one, which you cannot. And as I said, it is impossible to find the sum of a divergent infinite series. And to find the sum of a convergent infinite series, we use the formula S infinity, which means sum of an infinite series, equals your first term divided by 1 minus R. And your assignments on pages 63 to 65. Good luck and see you in class.